great to be with you today. We're going to be bringing up a person by the name of T Mike Todd. He is um, the head pastor of a Transformation Church is the name of his group. And I want to confront some of the things that are being said. My heart is very, very vexed this morning as I read and I look at what's going on. This needs to be addressed and we're going to address it. So please bear with me. Stick with us throughout this video because it's going to really be informative. And it's going to tell you the truth. If you are a seeker of truth and you want to have eternal life and maybe even feel that you do, the Bible says to test yourselves in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 5. Examine yourself whether you're into faith. Please pay attention and listen closely to the following video. World to himself. Not imputing, and that word means accounting. Not, not accounting their sins or trespasses against them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. God didn't do it just for us. He did it for the entire world. But pastor, everybody's not going to heaven. Correct. Because God gave everybody choice. I'm about to drop some knowledge on you that, that, that everybody has to be able to receive. And this may be a shocking statement for some people, but people don't go to hell for sin. Jesus already paid for that. They go to hell for unbelief. I've heard that doctrine before, haven't you? It started in the Garden of, e of Eden. There was Eve and there was the serpent that was there. And he was speaking to Eve. He was preaching to Eve. Eve had told him, what did God say not to do? One commandment God told Adam and Eve. Don't eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. One commandment. The devil comes and he tells Eve, he says this, the serpent said to, to the woman, and it just is in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 4, you shall not surely die. God, the Lord said, if you break this commandment, you're going to die. The devil said, you can break the commandment, you won't die. The Lord said that if you sin, you're of the devil, and if you die in your sin, in John 8, 21, he says, you're going to go to hell. Well, Mike Todd says, you're not going to go to hell. Does that sound familiar? He sounds like the devil, identical to the devil. The devil said you can break God's commandment and you won't die. Mike Todd said you can break God's commandment and you won't die. The whole thing's starting all over again. This man is preaching the doctrine of the devil. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 that in the last days there would be seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. This is a teaching of the devil that Mike Todd is giving you. You will go to hell for your sin. Jesus said that. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, look what he says here. Paul is speaking. He says, I fear, verse 3 of chapter 11, I fear lest by any means as the serpent tricked Eve through his subtlety, just like Mike Todd's doing, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He said, if there comes to you anyone that preaches different than what this gospel is, let him be accursed, he says here. Don't receive it. Leave it alone. Get away from that. That is a doctrine of the devil. My Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, that know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? They will not inherit. That's not what Mike Todd said. He said you will inherit the kingdom of God. That God has already paid for all the sins of the whole world. God has not paid for the sins of somebody that hasn't come to him and turned in, in godly sorrow and repentance from their sin. They are in their sin. God said they were in their sin. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? No fornicator, no adulterer, no homosexual, no murderer, no thief. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says it again in Galatians 5, 19. It says the same thing. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Fornication, adultery, idolatry, uh, uh, homosexuality, liars, all these. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Revelation chapter 21 in verse, in, in verse, eight, verse 9, what does it say there? Revelation 21, verse 8, listen to it. It says this, But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars 
shall have their part in hell. The lake of fire which burns with fire and brimstone, this is the second death. He says, oh, you're not going to get the wage of your sin. And Christ became your sin for you. No, he didn't. Christ died as a sin offering to all those that will come to him and repent of their sin and turn from their sin and walk with the Lord. The Lord said in, in Luke 13, 3 and 13, 5, he says, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. You won't make it. Repentance is necessary. Listen to this scripture, what it says here, 2 Thessalonians. I want you to hear this scripture because he is saying it doesn't matter if you obey him or doesn't obey you. Listen, this is in the new covenant. This is after Jesus had died and resurrected. This is for you today. He's speaking this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. The Lord shall come back with his mighty angels. This is verse 7. And in verse 8, he's going to come back in flaming fire. Listen closely now. This is really serious. He's coming back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and listen closely, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're going to hell, you're going to be executed with fire and vengeance from the Lord. This man tells you, no, you're not. My Bible says, yes, you are. Who are you going to believe? Why are you listening to this? Why are you sitting on him? Got two million followers? What is wrong with people? Why don't you listen to what the Word of God says? Jesus said in Revelation chapter 22, he comes back in the last book of the last Bible, the last book of the Bible, the last chapter, and he comes back in Revelation chapter 22. And he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Whosoever does not do the commandments of God, will not have the right to enter into the gates, into the city, into heaven. You can't go in. This is so serious. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. That's what you get if you, if you sin. You must turn from your sin. Repent. That means depart from your sin. I hear somebody saying, well, you don't know what I did, Pastor Mike, and you don't know how bad I was. Abram was a heathen. Like, 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 if you read, the, he did not come. People are like, well, you know, he was from the tribe of Israel. and da -da. No, Israel was his grandson. Like, 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 it was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob's name got changed to Israel. Like, that's where the children, he was, he was from a heathen nation. They didn't believe God. I mean, okay, because some of y'all think that, no, we act like these Bible characters are superheroes or something to be, like, no, they were real people. Like, his wife was beautiful, and he came into a city, and he lied, lied, and said that his wife was his sister so the king could basically take her and sexually abuse her. This was before he believed. This guy is, is lying to you. He's not telling the truth. I'm going to show you what the scripture says. If you'll turn to Genesis chapter 20 and verse 9, uh, it, 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 verse, I'm sorry, verse 12, it says, in, uh, this is Abraham speaking, and he's speaking to Abimelech. He went through that land, and it says, and yet indeed, Sarah is my sister. Was he lying? No. Listen to what it says. She is the daughter of my father. Mike Todd says that he was lying. My Bible says that he was not lying. Why are you believing this guy? This guy's a child of the devil. The Bible tells you in, in Matthew chapter 7, it tells you there that beware of false prophets or teachers. He is a false preacher. Mike Todd is. Why? Because he comes in sheep's clothing, but he's inwardly a ravening wolf. He said, Jesus says, this is how you know that they're, that they're ravening wolves. This is how you know that, uh, be, to be aware of them. By their fruit, you'll know them. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. It can't bring forth that kind of sin. He's lying to you. Look what else it says here. Genesis chapter 20, verse 12. She's my sister. And she became my wife. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said to her, this is thy kindness which thou shalt show unto me. At every place where we go, <coughs> you were going to say, Abraham is my brother. God put that on Abraham's heart because he was the truth. 
She was his sister. He said she was lying. No, she was not lying. He was. God still calls him the father of our faith. Why? Because when he sees Abram, he does not see Abram. He sees Jesus because he believed in Genesis 12. You can go read it. And some of y'all say, okay, it was, it was before he believed. But after he believed, some of y'all know, after he believed, he slept with the housekeeper trying to make the promise of God come to pass. Like he committed adultery after he believed. Why okay. didn't God throw him out? Why is he not? Why is he still in the Bible? Abraham did not commit adultery. He's already accused him of lying, and we proved that was wrong. Now I'm going to prove to you that Abraham did not commit adultery. First of all, the Mosaic law was not in place yet, so they didn't have the commandments. Moses, had, Moses was not around yet. Abraham was way before Moses' time. Second of all, there was nothing wrong back then with polygamy. With, with polygamy. There was nothing wrong with having more than one wife. As a matter of fact, if you go to 2 Samuel chapter 12, when the Lord had, re had rebuked David for his sin through Nathan the prophet, this is what God told David in verse 8 of chapter 12 of 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. He says, And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom. I gave you wives, David, not just one wife. I gave you all your wives. Now, why would God give him wives knowing that he'd be committing adultery? It wasn't not adul adultery. It wasn't adultery. It was okay to have more than one wife. He was committed to all his wives. He is lying. That was not sin. Now, I want to show you something else that's very, very important. If you go with me to the book of John, chapter 8, this is what breaks my heart when somebody does this. In John chapter 8, Jesus is on the scene. He's speaking about being free. He says in John 8, 34, that everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And we know that a slave does not have inheritance in the kingdom of God, regardless of what Mike Todd said. If you sin, the Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, you're of the devil. Jesus repeats this in here, John chapter 8 here. He says that they were of their father, the devil, because they were in sin and they were lying. Jesus is telling them that in whom the Son sets free, he is free indeed. He's free from sin. He quits sinning. And they were saying that, no, we've never been in bondage to everyone. Abraham is our father. And I want you to hear what Jesus says to them in verse 39 of chapter 8. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. <coughs> Jesus said to them, listen closely. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. What kind of works was Christ talking about it that Abraham did? Well, if you go to Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 and 2, God told Abraham, he said, walk perfect before me. Don't sin. And by you obeying this, then I'm going to make you the father of many nations, and I'm going to multiply your seed as the sand of the sea. Guess what? God did make him the father of many nations. They called him Father Abraham. Why did God do that? He did it on a condition. The condition was that Abraham would walk perfect before him. Abraham walked perfect before the Lord. Now the Lord comes back here and he tells these, these scribes and Pharisees, he said, if Abraham was your father, you would do the works of Abraham. Well, Jesus, what was the works of Abraham? Was it adultery? Was it lying that Jesus was saying they would do? Of course not. My Todd, you are blaspheming God. How dare you say that about Abraham? He is our father of faith. He was a man that walked zealously for God and left everything he had and walked with the Lord blameless. He was a holy man. He was not an adulterer. He was not a liar. And you justify your sin by trying to put sin on somebody else. Shame on you. But my father Abraham was a great man of God that walked in holiness and righteousness all the days of his life. These false teachers, guys, listen to me. you got to come out of there, man. This man does not qualify by what the Scripture says to even be a preacher or a teacher. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2 says, a preacher or a teacher or a pastor must be blameless. This man is not blameless. He tells you he sinned. He's making these rock videos or whatever you might want to call it with the world. He's just like the world. He's conformed to the world. He hadn't conformed to Christ. 
He had transformed by renewing his mind. He's still doing that stuff. And he's justified it so that you can do it with him. Not only does he glory in his own sin, but he wants to glory in your sin too. If you don't come out from among them, you're going with him. He's going to hell. He will not make it according to my Bible. Unless this Bible is completely wrong, that man's going to hell. I'm not trying to judge him. The Bible's already judged him. If you sin, you of the devil. Hebrews 5, Hebrews 5, 9 says that Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all that obey him. This man does not obey him, said it's not necessary to obey him, and that obedience that doesn't matter if you obey him because you're going to heaven if, in your sin. And you can just keep on sinning. That's the lie of the enemy. He is preaching Satan's doctrine. You can eat the fruit of the tree. You can disobey God and you're not going to die. You've fallen for it too, just like Adam and Eve did. The subtlety of Mike Todd, you're doing the same thing that Adam and Eve did. You're falling for that seed. You're eating that fruit of that tree that's going to send you to hell. You better wake up because it's coming quickly. And my God said that he's coming back to execute judgment on all those that do not obey his gospel. What did my Jesus say? What did he mean to obey? He said, go and sin no more. My Todd says, go and sin all you want. Who are you going to believe? My Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, he says, why do you call me Lord and do not the things that I say? Why do you say you're a Christian? That's not a church. That's an anti-church. A church is made up of believers, of saints. A church is made, as Jesus said in, in Ephesians 5, 27, he's coming back for a church that's spotless, without blame, blameless, that's living holy. As he said in 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, be holy as I am holy. Jesus said, come out from among this. You can't continue to walk in darkness and expect to be in the light. You can't continue to fellowship with the, with the world. He says the fellow that's a homosexual, the fellow that's living in sin and going in and out of ballrooms, that's your brother. That's not my brother. Church, until we believe this, we look at people on the street who smoke as less than us instead of as my brother and sister. You look at the person who's walking into the gay nightclub as an enemy instead of your brother and sister. You look at the person who's walking into the gay nightclub as an enemy instead of your brother and sister. Just because they're doing the wrong thing does not mean they're not in the family. My Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, turn there with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, an important scripture for you. I'm, I'm trying to help you. Please listen to me. Please don't turn it off. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul wrote here. He says, now I've written, in verse 11, he now I've written unto you, don't keep company. If anyone that, that he calls himself a brother, like Mike Todd's doing, be a fornicator, one that has sex before marriage, a covetous man, an idolater, a railer, a drunkard, an extortioner, a sinner. Anyone that's saying they're a brother and they're saying it's okay to sin, that you're going to heaven and you're not going to go to hell for sin, this is what your Bible, my Bible says to do. Don't even eat some, with someone like Mike Todd. Don't fellowship with him. Don't socialize. Get away from that man. He's a devil. You need to know that. Come out from that. Oh, he might have enticing words. You know that Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11 says. He's making it look with his smooth words like everything's fine in his enthusiasm. He's lying to you. It's against the word of God. Because your performance does not change your position with God. Performance doesn't change your position? What is he saying? He's saying that it doesn't matter what you do, that your position with God and spending eternity with him will never change. That's not what Jesus said, guys. He said that if you commit these sins, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Romans chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, first, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, First, uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, Revelation chapter 22, all over the place. Listen to the scripture. 
right here. Listen to what it says. He says that your performance is not going to change your destiny, basically. And in Romans chapter 2, Paul addresses this. Listen to what he says here. He says this. But after the hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. If you sin, you're treasuring up for yourself wrath from God. Look what he says, verse 6. Who will render to every man according to what he does. He said it's, the, he said it's not going to change your position of what you do. My Bible says right here, he's going to render to every man according to what he does, what his works are, what his deeds are. He's saying one thing, and the Bible says something completely different. Who are you going to listen to? Please come out from that before it's too late. You'll be screaming in hell, wishing you to listen to this video, and wishing you to pay attention. I promise you that if you don't listen. He says this, <coughs> to them who by patient continuance in well-doing, not sinning, seek glory and honor, immortality, and eternal life they get. But unto them that are contentious, that are fighting against this word, and do not obey the truth. You know what do not obey the truth mean? They sin. What's going to happen? He says you're not going to hell for your sin. He made it real clear, didn't he? Your position's not going to change. But he says, but to those that obey unrighteousness, here's what you get. Indignation. And wrath. Does that sound like something you want? Does that sound like heaven? That's hell. That's hell that's coming. But he says, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that sins. Every one of them. I, I'm, I'm very vexed. I'm very, very grieved in my spirit. Because of people like this. That are taking your soul. I don't know if it's for fame, for money, and maybe all of it. For prestige but I don't care what the reasoning is. I care about your soul because I love you. I love Mike Tyler. Mike, I, I, I hope this could wake you up. I hope you see this. I hope some of you pass this on to him. But I'm telling you, if you follow what he's saying, it's the road to destruction. The Lord said straight, and straight is, the gate, is the way and narrow is the gate that leads to life. And few there be that find it. You have to come the way the Lord said. He said in Luke 14, 20, unless you forsake all that you have, you can't be my disciple. He said in Luke 9, 23, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. Forget about yourself. This man is not forgetting about himself. He's doing everything he wants to do. Listen, I hope this gripped your heart. I hope there's something left inside of you that has some conviction left. And if it has, get away from this. Get down on your knees. Open up your Bibles, cry out to God, and ask Him to forgive you for all your past sin, that you don't want the wages of sin of eternal damnation in hell. That's what God says will happen. You must believe what God said. Please. He said in John 8, 11, go and sin no more. He said in John 5, 14, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. He said in Ezekiel 3, 20 and 21, don't you know that the righteous don't sin? He said if you go back to sin, all your righteousness which you've done will no longer be remembered. Wow, this is so powerful, guys. Please listen and get down on your knees. Cry out to God. Ask Him to forgive you because He said in the book of Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He said, he that covers his sin, that's what he's trying to do, cover it, thinking God doesn't see it. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, uh, of Hebrews 4, 4, 13, it says that all things are naked and open and the Lord sees everything. You're not hiding anything. He said, he who covers his sin shall not prosper, but he that confesses and forsakes his sin shall be shown mercy. Would you confess your sin to the Lord? And would you commit to forsake them and never go back to them again? In true broken and contrite spirit, listen, you may think, well, I went too far. Listen, the Lord said, if you'll come to me with a broken, a contrite spirit and tremble at the words that we talked about this morning, his word, he will in no wise cast you out. Cry out to him. I'm Don from only one truth, a pastor here. Come and be with us. 
I'll help you. I want to help you to escape from the fiery flames of hell so that you'll live eternity in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you. Please take heed to what I said before it's too late. God bless you.